I am excited to see this board. What do we got? Ooh, market four parries as the center square. That is definitely going to be rushed. People a lot of trouble, especially you know it kind of depends on what kind of shields we see, and uh, if they can get a parry shield early enough. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Some very I interesting. I love the grail without status effects. We may see some twin blade checks here. There's some rushable stuff. Ooh, we have more Mo Lord of Blood on the board here. We also have Godfrey. We've got oh, uh, some late game stuff. We also have Hitless. We have uh, Godric's Great Rune. So that's a nice little combo they could pull off after going for Margit. Go three squares here for Stormvale, pretty much. This is looking really good to rush Stormvale right away. So you want a you yeah, sure. buildable weapon like ASAP. Um, also, Commando Neil Cheese. You could do that right away if you really wanted to. Little NPC bush. Invaders is fast. And uh, giving Bach his needle back, that's pretty quick as well. Um, yeah, not bad, not bad. So a lot of rushable stuff into prep is what this looks like. You rush these squares, and then you have Lanciax, Moog, Fias, Gold Free, Black Blade, Kindred. You got a lot of later, later game stuff here. Rikard's Great Rune. Uh, this, is a, this is weird. This is an interesting board. I'm curious to see what's going to happen here in this early game, because... You know, Bree knows that Kata is a very, very efficient, very fast player. She may choose to give up some of these early game squares and go and, and prep for these later game squares uh, mm. because, you know, she may feel like he's at, a, at an advantage there. On the flip side of that, she may see kill a Remembrance boss hitless. She has quite a bit of uh, practice when it comes to hitless bosses, so she may feel like she's at an, adva at an advantage there. And, you know, even if she misses uh, an early square, she may be able to make a comeback and, and let that consistency carry her through the early game. Yeah, it looks like that Bree is currently hovering the Astrologer class, which does start with Ooh. the uh, the Rickety Shield, I believe, and also That's Reduvia. Parry shield and Reduvia. Oh! That is uh, pretty nasty. Catalyst thinking got the same thing, doing too. the same thing. Yeah. Okay, looks like we may see them going the same path here. I'm excited. We're gonna have I mean, an intense early game. This is gonna be this is gonna be just rushing back to back. Who gets uh, Margaret first? Who gets Godric first? You know, doing it hitless on top of that. It's gonna the question is, do they have the stats for this? As you know, as is. I see they got 13 arcane. Looks like they might already have the stats as long as they've got the dexterity. Mm, I know it's low strength. So they should be fine there. The dex, I, they might need a couple levels there. I would start with the lands between rune here just to make sure. I think that, the lands between rune will get them there. Yeah, they should. That, that should definitely get them enough levels into uh, using that Reduvia. But they should be fine. Yeah, they are um, three short on dexterity, which the lands between, between rune should get them there for sure. And uh, we're going into the match as we speak. Who is going where? There are a lot of options here in the very early game as far as like what you can rush. I think the the Stormvale line is a great line for sure. You know, rushing kill market oh, four parries, right. going for remembrance hitless, but uh, you know, killing three NPC invaders is also an extremely great line to go for. I like how the match starts and immediately the players freeze. Uh, you know, it, it it's for suspense is what we what we call ah, it. Ah, yes, the, the yes. classic. Building the anticipation as we enter the chapel of anticipation here in the lands between. <laughs> it's how uh, fitting. It's going to be really interesting to see uh, if they know how to deal with uh, Margaret Perry. By the way. Um, I, I mean, I've seen people that are like super experienced on these market parries and they, they still, you know, under the pressure of the bingo, the yeah. bingus gets to them. It, the, you know what they say, bingus is they gun a bongus and that has an effect on the players. It absolutely does. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and also like the thing that's going to be interesting is like last season, season, so season one, obviously, uh, for the Uchi was the strategy of parrying, but then not going for the repost, getting some more bleed procs off, then going for yeah, the parrying the again, up. and then go for the uh, repost for the the bleed proc. In this case, Reduvia does have bleed. Do we see another strategy around that where they don't take the repost and instead just kind of go for more R ones uh, during the stacker phase? I think that that wouldn't be a bad play. I mean, in, in general, it seems like reposts tend to be slow, although. With the 1.10 repost buff, maybe that's changed. True. That's a good point. That's a really, yeah. really good point here. Not to mention Reduvia being a dagger has an has an additional crit bonus advantage over 
a lot of other types of weapons. So we'll see what happens. And Catalyst already doing the good old jump tech to save microseconds on each and every jump. Um, does build up over time. I don't know how much it does. I think it's not could... a lot, but it's yeah. it's enough. He's also <laughs> skipping the Kale Grace. Yeah, he's he's really going for that market because you don't have to go for the Kale Grace to get Torrent if you go for the right. Gatefront Grace. So I th I'm thinking he's just thinking about time. This is where this is where that speed comes in. He's just like I I need time. I need I need to be as, as ahead of of the you know race as possible. Well, I mean, if you think about it, like Kale, the advantage you get out of Kale is you get the crafting kit if you need something to craft. You get some cracked pots if that's on the board, but I don't even think that's on the board this time around. And you get a couple of weapon checks, but, you know, what could you want more than the Reduvia at this point? Yeah, no, I agree. I definitely agree. So I do think skipping that Kale Grace is going to be uh, rewarding for him here. So she's going to be behind, I think, around, like around 15 seconds. So that's definitely going to make a difference here once we uh, get into the actual market race. Unless maybe Bree just gives it up, goes for NPC invaders. You know, that might be a thing, too, where she just knows Catalyst is a speedrunner. I'm probably not going to beat him to market. I'm just going to give that square up. But it is center square, and also it gives you access to two other squares on the board. I feel like that's too much of a, of a combination to give up to the other player just yeah. based on speed. But, you know, something to, something to note about the market square is it is it's hard. It's not an easy square. It's yeah. something that if you play perfectly, you can get it really quickly. But if you mess up, you could see yourself actually dying on that fight. And here we have uh, Catalyst getting through Storm Hill, grabbing yeah. good old Grace, maybe grabbing the Stone Sword Key. Not even grabbing the Stone Sword Key. I always grab that one just in case. It's, it's right there, uh, you know, if ever you need it for anything else in the future. It's just nice to ha hold on to. It's really easy to grab. I, I do yeah, wonder who's going to go for the 30 intelligence, too, by the way. That's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah. Let's see. Where what, uh, With that 30 intelligence, it is on the Lanciax line, but everything else on there is honestly not too big of a time investment. I mean, you do have to go to Landell, which is a pretty big time investment, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. 30 int may not end up being super worth it, especially when you look at that line one or column one or sorry, row one. If I can say the right word the first time, that'd be awesome. Row one, uh, that probably is not a line that they're going to be wanna, wanting to prioritize. What about that column five there? Uh, column five is not the has worst. some potential, but even that Rikard's Great Rune is not super fast. That's okay. We already have the first market fight here from Catalyst. Gets the first parry. Starts getting some R1s one, in. Second parry. Two. There we go. Wow, that was a very clean start. Okay, yeah. The 110 patch definitely makes a huge difference here. Bleed proc already for Catalyst on Bree the board. Bree has one. Kata has three. Bree has two now. And four for Catalyst. Taking that repost one more time. We'll have to see how this phase two goes. Bree is at three and at four now. Catalyst at six. And now it's all about whoever finishes the fight first. Catalyst Target. doing a little bit of extra credit, getting Going some extra phase parries two in. For both of these fights simultaneously. Look at that. That is almost completely in sync. That was, yeah, that was crazy. That was really cool. So it's all about who has the more efficient phase two. It's looking like it might be Kata on this side here. Utilizing that Ash of War, by the way, that is really good for the Reduvia, especially since like patch 1.7, I believe, is where they added the double hit box for the Reduvia, where if you're in melee oh, range, are. if you hit the Ash of War, that shoots a blood slash out. Also, the dagger hitting counts on top of that, so you can get double oh, bleed so procs. Tense. Look at how close this... Okay, the bleed proc from Kata, but another bleed proc from Bree will actually get the kill. Uh-oh, she's This close. is going to be tight. This is going to be extremely tight. I think I think Kata... I oh, think Kata oh, got... oh. oh, my God. Okay, Kata did get the Kat... kill first, but... I yeah. mean, that was a matter oh. of like five seconds. That is a difference of, of literal seconds. <sighs> but honestly, I think that this is not as bad for Bree as it looks because she got that progress towards Remembrance Boss Hitless. So now she can go to Godric, go for that Hitless. Yeah. And, um, you know, she gets the 12k runes from Margit. So although she didn't progress towards, uh, she didn't put a square on the board, that is, she is making good progress. 
I mean, yeah, even then, like, Catalyst doesn't know that she's going for uh, Market for Paris. He can just assume that he possibly sniped her on that, but he doesn't necessarily know. Um, yeah. And if she just keeps going going forward, she could easily get the Remembrance boss hit list here. Uh, not sure if Catalyst is going to uh, just go for that or just going straight for uh, God's Great Rune and just kind of, you know, take the hits. Even if, so even if it does get hit, just still take that. Because that is uh, Godric's Great Rune on the row three. Just seems like a, a solid line. You go for NPC Invaders after that. You've got Skin Apostle Duelist. That's a really quick line overall for Bingo. Yeah. Grab some oh sleep God. pots, you know? <laughs> I got my heart going. That was close. Dude, the soldiers sometimes, man, they get paid overtime. I swear. Oh, yeah. Christmas bonus. You know, a couple of raw meat dumplings. I, dude, I think they got a, a stealth buff at some point. I don't remember them being that bad early on. Do we have a Godric's Great Rune on this board here? Yes. I'm... Row three. Interesting. I didn't see either of them go and get the bridge grace. I'm a little surprised. Yeah, I think I think a lot of players for some reason don't go for the bridge grace. They just go back to the uh the gate front. They just run by the ballistas again, yep. I guess. Yep. I guess it makes sense. I mean, it, I imagine it is faster overall, especially if they are under the impression they're racing for this Godric square. You know, uh, it getting that hitless. It would have been interesting, by the way, if you do beat Godric, that the whole castle afterwards is empty, like as they just like they move on, you know? Yeah. Because like their yeah. leader's dead, you know? Like, what are they supposed to do now? What are they doing here? Yeah, standing guard for nothing. You're not getting paid. Maybe go to a uh, you know a new castle. Yeah. Radon's still hanging around. This is interesting, though. I think Bree might actually have a head start here. If, uh, oh, never mind. He's not going to round table. So, okay. Okay. So okay. He did level. Got a little bit of HP there. Yeah. 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 Let's see if Bree also, Bree also choosing to grab the grace. I don't think she'll be sitting down. She is sitting down. Okay. Oh, Cat already getting hit on the first part. Uh, <laughs> All right. And this is. This is what happens. This is how Godric goes. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting, especially with those uh, breathing fire attacks. See who gets possibly unlucky with the good old uh, physics of this game. And like I was saying, this could be where Bree... Oh. Wow. Kata, what just happened? I don't... I've never... That is the weirdest hit. I've never seen that hitbox. Wait, what was that? Did, it, did like his I... foot hit him? I think Godric's extra long second toe might have clipped him there. Yeah, that was I, odd. Yeah. Oh, and, was, and Bree gets hit. Bro, oh, is, what is going on? The Godric incident. It's happening. I mean, you did say it is it is Bingus Day, and on Bingus Day, people do get nervous. So the Bingus is gonna bongus, and that is something I have learned over the years that uh sticks with me to this day. That is crazy. But we'll see. This is all about consistency here. And I, At this like, point, yeah. the more consistent player will probably come out with the dub on this square. This is very toe-to-toe -to -toe right now. It absolutely is, Dom. I could not have said it better myself. Yeah. It's crazy. It pretty much comes down to who gets more bleed procs. Yeah. And I, I think that this square is going to set the tone for the rest of the match here. Because this is Bree's opportunity to come back from a slight deficit, or Kata's opportunity to take that lead that he's building yep. and uh, you know launch him into the mid game with a, a two square lead where Bree has not made any progress towards other squares. So it, it, it this is a high stakes square here. Yeah, especially for Bree because if she does uh, lose out on Godric's Great Rune and Hitless, um, it's looking pretty bad. But here's the yeah. thing, like if that hitless square does get marked by Catalyst, I would immediately go for NPC invaders and uh try at least stop him on row three. Because that is a both phase transition, by the way. Wow, that was basically simultaneous. It seems like both players they got their uh they they they, they got the hits out of the way and now Oh, here we go. Focused up. Cat has got some fire. This is a huge meme of an attack. Okay. Went well Handled for well, him though. in that case. Huge bleed proc for Bree, though. <sighs> that oh, is... There is a bleed proc for Kata. Coming back with a bleed proc of his own. Bree is getting the meme fire. Let's see if she also gets... Oh, Kata's got hit! 
Kata has been killed. This oh, is Bree's opportunity. no. This is not looking good for Kata. Looking really good for Bree. She just has to hold it. She does get a stagger here. A this is huge. huge stagger. Let's look at that 110 repost. Okay. Okay. Some Ashes of War, maybe. Okay, not she bad. just has to hold it together for the last little bit of this fight. She's got that L2 spam going. Keeping her distance just in case. She's not being greedy. She has opted not to greed. There it is. Bree's consistency has uh, has no bounds here. And this is where, uh, you know, keeping your distance, especially with Reduvia, is huge. Uh, that way you can just um, make sure that you can get those Ashes of War off and secure that uh, that square. There's Bree Mark in the square. So now Kata knows that he has lost the race to getting that Remembrance Boss hitless. But something else that, you know, is, is very interesting to note about speedrunners here is to be as good of a speedrunner as Kata is, you have to have a really solid mental and you have to be able yeah. to maintain grace under pressure. And that's something that Kata has shown that he's really, really good at. So I imagine he is just going to finish this out, get those runes, and then pivot to something else that uh, he will hopefully turn into an advantage for him. The interesting thing also is... Um... He's sticking to the fight. Yeah, we've seen a lot of pl like players that like, as soon as they lose a square, they just quit out. They reset. They like reset the board pretty much, reset their mental. Um, but most of the time, finishing the boss is actually just more beneficial, especially if it's a remembrance in this case, because the remembrance uh, will be beneficial for getting into the capital later on, if that's even a thing. Yeah, not to mention just the you know having the runes to be stronger. And now the nice thing for Kata here is he knows that you know even if he gets hit, he can still finish the fight. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't have to stress about doing it no hit. And what's going to be uh, even more interesting is if he calls the bluff on Gajic's Great Rune right now because Bree is not really rushing that, even though she just got the hitless square. Maybe thinking that he's not going to go for it now? Um, yeah, we were talking about this yesterday, and we were really like puzzled about why sometimes players just choose not to go for it. Yep. There is the because kill. You, you know Kata's. that if you get it first, that you have the advantage there. But maybe she thinks that Kata pivoted off of Godric. Yeah. Bree is not going for it. She's going straight to first step in this case. Or she's just okay with giving up the time. Maybe she values another square more. And, yep. Catalyst is going straight for that Restore yeah. Godric's Great Rune. This is going to actually bite possibly Bree in the butt here. She's going straight for O'Neal, looks like. Going for O'Neal. So she wants pressure on that row five then and maybe establishing a little bit of pressure on column one too. I was kind of expecting to see her go for three NPC invaders because that is another way to block that uh, row three. I don't know, but this is a this is a huge uh, bluff call though by Catalyst. I think this is this is a great play by him, being like I like a lot of people just don't go for it. They just don't do the follow up. I'm gonna I'm gonna call the bluff. I'm gonna go for this now. I'm gonna time sync three minutes. This is this is well, really I, I good by him. I wonder if he knows how much time it takes. He probably knows how much time it takes, and he's he's been you know keeping keeping a timer going in his brain yeah. ever since he saw Bree mark that Remembrance Square. And he's probably thinking to himself, well, she hasn't marked it yet, so she's probably not going for it. Yeah, this is going to be really, really good for him. Bree using the finger, by the way, for her weapon. Oh my gosh, she is she is going to be giving everyone the finger on this on this here bingo match. Can't believe it. On I'm my... actually surprised she's not sticking with Reduvia here. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I, th I think pivoting off Reduvia immediately is is always the best call. Uh, it is great so? for bleed procs, but mo like half the enemies in this game don't bleed anyways, um, and it just doesn't oh, really Kata scale well into, arrow. into mid game. Okay, I guess that makes sense. The finger has just better raw damage, and it's Plus a hammer. It that, uh, yeah, it has that hammer move set, so it gets that thirty eight and a half damage per R or uh, poise per R two. Yeah. This, this is going to be huge, though, from Cattle. If he then straights pivots to NPC invaders, that would be very He's bad. He's going to have a very scary presence here on row yep. three. Yep. I and I, I, don't, I don't see why he would go for anything else, honestly. This is very interesting. It's it's going to be hard for Bree to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that. Mm-hmm. I agree. I definitely yeah. agree. 
but you know she 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 tends to have uh, 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 I'm trying to come up with a finger pun. She tends to be able to to to, to uh, finger the best play in a way that w many people cannot. So maybe she sees something that we don't hear. Oh no, there's a lot of huns in chat. <laughs> uh, look at this O'Neill. Uh, so Don, Catalyst here are going to be here. restoring Godric's Great Rune. Uh, that is huge. And I wonder like, what Bree's going to think now, seeing that that square is going to be marked by, by Catalyst, while she's going for this O'Neill cheese and not going for um, like Millicent and Vader in this case. Like She's, she's, she's time-syncing O'Neill. This is like another two, three minutes. If he goes for invaders now, we already have a, a potential bingo within like possibly 30 minutes of the game. Yeah, I mean, we have to look at this this row five versus row three i don't surely she doesn't think she can get row five before he finishes row three because There's no way you know god's gonna apostle is the slowest square there in, in row three and looking at row five slowest square i mean you have black blade kindred you got Rikard's great rune it's uh yep it's not it's not quick if catalyst goes for npc invaders here this is this is bad news bears for uh for Bree. Especially if yeah. he grabs the Stone Sword keys here. If he thinks ahead of the time and grabs the Stone Sword keys for a duelist for the jail cave, that would be huge. He's going to gate front, so he might be going for invaders. I I I think that's the right play. Wait, what just happened to Bree? She just reset O'Neill. I missed that. I wonder if he maybe uh de aggroed or something. Maybe he wasn't getting into, into the position that she wanted him to be in. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. I, I must have missed that somehow. I was I was watching where where Catalyst was going. Yeah. Oh, uh, he was stuck apparently. It looks like that uh, Catalyst is going for Death Poker or has Death Poker as well. By the way, that was in the uh, chest for the Greatsword. What What's your take on Death Poker, Dom? What do you think? It's weird. It's it's weird. Like it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's just it's weird. Like I don't feel comfortable using it. It's got a weird move set. The Ash of War like takes a while to pop off. Like it's good for if you if you feel really comfortable with it, it seems strong. But if you aren't sure how the weapon works, it just feels weird. Honestly, it it's against a lot of it's hit or miss. Against a lot of bosses, it'll just delete them. Against bosses like Radon, Placidus X, uh, any big boss with long moves, it, it's amazing. But uh, you know, whenever whenever you have any boss that has fast attacks, it, you, you're just never getting that weapon art off. And the Charge R2 is not worth using in the slightest. Yeah, it's All like right, a, it's like an ingrown toenail. You know, like some people just mm. leave it because it's like whatever, and some people are like, no, I don't like it, get rid of it. So it's, it's, you know, just two different ways of looking at it, pretty much. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Kata's going here for the Bach square, it looks like, as he goes down to the... Uh, he's going to the Merchant, and I imagine he's going to go to the Demi-Human duo fight here as well. I saw Darkmoon Greatsword. I, I just saw that too. And, you know, 30 Intelligence is on the board. Darkmoon Greatsword doesn't look that bad, you know? Does not look that bad. But, you know, Kata, he, he is one to go for the optimal plays... And although Dark Moon Greatsword isn't bad, it it is a really high stat investment. But like you said, it goes well with the 30 int for sure. If he wanted to start making progress towards other lines, this is so really we'll, weird. Uh, I'm surprised that Kalos is going for. I'm surprised he's not rushing NPC invaders. By the way, he's he's going for Box Needle instead. That is a little surprising. I I, I see that Road Three immediately, and I'm I'm booking it. Maybe he's thinking that's going to be contested, and that either he's just going for something else instead. Yeah, he may just not want to take the gamble on the possibility that Bree could be going for that right now. Because, I mean, if I'm looking at, at Bree's, you know, board, I feel like that is a no-brainer for Bree. Yeah. So he may just be like, all right, I'm just going to put pressure in other places because of uh, what he sees that she could be going for. But I think as soon as, she, as uh, he sees this square pop, he's going to realize like, oh, uh, maybe I could be making progress towards that. Yes. 
having a little bit of a hard fight here. And does aggro the second demi-human chief, by the way? This is uh, getting a little crazy. He didn't actually summon Istvan, by the way. Uh, for this fight, which uh, a lot of other players have been doing just because it makes it way easier. Does get the stagger, though, on one of the demo human Chiefs. Lots uh, of I damage. Did I see him do the flick? Yeah. Did I actually see him bring the flick out? My god. Gave him the good old finger. I, we, we love to see it. We love to see our players giving bosses the finger uh, as, as much as possible, really. Especially duo fights. He's got to be careful yeah. here. Ooh. They absolutely deserve the finger. Oh, he, he's got to really be careful he's, here. He's, he's getting low. He's not healing. It's really bothering me. <laughs> it stresses me out. It's you know, you know, that's like one thing I hate when watching like people play Souls games. It's like the people yeah. that like like linger too much on low health. Especially speedrunners. They do it all the time. Yeah. It's so stressful. And here we have Bree now going for invaders, man. This is exactly what I was talking about. You, you should have uh, definitely gone for inv invaders uh, first. Because this could have been a really huge snipe. For, for for Catalyst, or a huge pickup in this case. And although Bree, you know, well, may have some uneasiness about this situation. Well, hold on, hold on. She's kind of pivoting. She's not going to Nereus. She's not doing invaders. She's going straight for sleep pots? Mm. I, what's going on? Do they not see NPC invaders on the board? Am I? What? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. What is? I'm scared, Dom. I'm scared. Oh, Knight's Cavs. Wow, she really wants to pressure this this uh, row five. I think she's going for the sleep pot recipe here. Maybe just thinking that he's already going to be on NPC invaders. So to go for like the long run block rather than going for the immediate block. But even then, a plus zero Reduvia with uh with sleep pots i don't think you can do godskin apostle and caitlin like that is no that's gonna be a little tough here for sure at, at some point brie is gonna have to figure out how to contest and it, it's it, you know it's gonna be tense and kata is not going for invaders like i don't, I don't understand why would you not go for invaders <laughs> i i feel like we're this is like a, a cold war on the on the invaders square here where neither one of them wants to go f wants to invest the time into it and then have the potential of being sniped see brie has potential here to go for anastasia which is right mm -hmm. next door as well but she probably won't she had Narius, anastasia you have henricus who's near stormhill shack okay yeah yep yeah, yeah, mad yeah, tongue alberich who's at the round table that's probably the one of the worst picks you could do but still she had literally she literally had millicent next to o'neill that you could have babooshed for free that's true and you know with the finger here she could be giving those npcs the finger and they would be just uh, uh, unable to do anything about it you know okay. they they get flicked right on the ground oh. and they just they yeah. can combo them endlessly looks like that she might be going for anastasia now oh never mind she is uh deciding to freeze in place she is uh, b b both players have grinded to a halt here and then unhalted yes Excellent. I don't. I don't know. This is not a good. I would use the finger on Anastasia. I would not be using the Reduvia here. NPCs have a strong habit of rolling infinitely. Damning roll. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they do. You know, the, they gave NPCs iframes in this game. It's uh, it's quite a design a design choice. And Catalyst going for a cat. He's going for duelists instead. How do you not see that NPCs is fast? I don't understand. I duelists. I mean, that's not even. No, it that's makes not even... a little bit of sense. No, it's, this is no. This is a uh, Black Knife Assassin. He's not even in the duelist category. Oh. Check it. It's an Uchi check, I guess. Nagakiba. I mean, that's good. It's unsheath. I don't understand. Bree's making pretty quick work here of Anastasia. Looks like. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad for sure. Bree Maybe. getting the invader square could there you go totally change this game around i i if, am so confused if she neutralizes that pressure on row three all of a sudden her threats are a lot more meaningful i i don't understand i am so confused why is he there is catacombs on the on the on the board here by the way so two catacomb dungeons uh row four column one so maybe Catalyst is not even thinking about 
row three at all. He's thinking maybe long game row four. Yeah, row four could be blocking the column one as well. Uh, column one, uh, Bree does have a little bit of, of pressure on that column one. And, you know, although there is gold free there, it it's not the slowest line. So maybe he wants to counteract some sort of like late game pressure here. Narius invader now. Okay. Finally, finally something in this match makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't know. Like even even if things are are fast blocks, that doesn't mean you shouldn't go for them. Especially with invaders. Like even if you lose a little bit of time, at the very least it's it's still I don't know. I feel like maybe mind games have gone a little too far to where it just becomes <laughs> a, a, a weird gameplay of people doing nothing. Yeah. You know? The, 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 and then, you know, like we were talking about earlier, how like sometimes people will bluff squares, but then they'll they'll bluff the bluff and just finish the line. You know, yeah. maybe we've got like the, these mind games that have turned back around to be ineffective. And then in the future mind games, they'll just be like, we're going to go for the most obvious square. The, the the bingo meta is being turned on its head right now, and it is a very scary thing. The good thing here for Catalyst is that the Duelist Catacomb is really close nearby, so he would get the Catacomb here and the first Duelist. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that is a jump. That Yeah, that was interesting. What the hell was that? <laughs> Dude wow. got stuck on the cliffside there. Bree taken out. Narius with some Reduvia on Reduvia action. And now it looks like she may be going for Millicent. I think that's a good play. It's a very quick kill. I'm surprised the she didn't do that like first. That's that's like the weird thing. Is like why didn't she do that in the first place when she went for O'Neill? You know? Yeah, I don't know. That could have just been a product of a little indecisiveness. Maybe. Uh, yeah. That's something that that hurts players a lot in these matches. Or also something that where you just you don't realize it till after you left. Like, oh, I could have done that too. It's like it's like when you go grocery shopping. You know, you like I have a list in your mind, and then you enter the building and you forget half of it. You know, it's kind of the same thing here, where like you have something in mind, and as soon as you actually get to the location, there's other things you could have done as well, but you just completely forget. Well, I I mean I just I usually write down my grocery lists personally. Oh no, it's... weenies do that. Oh. I guess I'm a, I guess I'm, I guess I'm a weenie. <laughs> but our players here, they are definitely not weenies. Let me, uh, let me tell you that much. They have not written anything down. <laughs> and there's Bree with the block. I'd love to see it. Yeah, there's that, there's that NPC invaders block, which is so just odd, but. Yeah. Surprised to see Katarina go for it. That's definitely going to be a question for me when we get to post game. <clears throat> that's a hundred percent a question: is what the hell was up with NPC invaders, and why yeah. did no one want to pursue that? Well, I mean, both players at this point have each had an experience where they felt like they wasted some of their time. You know, uh, Bree was going for the four Margit parries and got sniped on that, and felt like she wasted wasted some time there. Kata felt like he wasted some time with the Godric, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, maybe both of them were a little gun shy of that three NPC invaders after each of them had gotten sniped once. Yeah, may maybe, maybe. Kalos, uh grabbing the catacomb square here, by the way. Um, definitely a good block by him for column one. And also kind of moving forward into row four here. It's just, it's just odd. Three moving into jail tunnel here. Uh, I think she's eyeballing at that tunnel square, which is right below Market Perry's. Okay. Definitely I wonder not what a she bad plans on doing with that. Just blocking row four, I think. Okay. The interesting thing about these blocks is that they don't really make any progress towards, uh, I mean, at least with this one, doesn't really make any progress towards achieving a line of her own, but it is something that is still crucial. She may look at that and say like, okay, uh, these other, if I don't block this one, then I'm going to have to invest a lot of time in blocking it later on. So yeah. this is her way of blocking it with the least time investment. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, Catalyst possibly prepping Godskin Apostle here, grabbing the rune and sleep pot recipe. Okay. 
You think we'll see a Kaled Apostle? Uh, if there was uh, five bosses in Kaled, yes. With this case being uh, six bosses in Altus, I do think it's Windmill Village Apostle instead. Okay. Because that would play into that square as well. Well, it's interesting because the Apostle in Kaled, it's way harder. It deals way more damage. It has way more HP. Uh, and yet it usually ends up being the faster one if you're looking to rush just because of the fact that it is way more uh, accessible yeah. in the early game. Yeah, I agree. Which means um, you have to get really, really good at Apostle if you want to get that square fast. The fight isn't too bad. And even like the weird thing, I, I think anyways, is that uh, Phase 2 for God's Good Apostle is actually easier than Phase 1 because some of the attacks that he does oh, yeah, are definitely. way more punishable. Um, you have a lot more windows of opportunity uh, in, in in phase two. Oh yeah, another important thing to note here is that uh, in in addition to this being a tunnel or precipice dungeon, it is also a dragon heart boss. True. So it actually does give her some progress in other areas of the board. Very true. She could easily actually go for this one and then also go for Makar, which is another magma worm, another dragon heart boss, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. also a precipice. Um. Definitely wouldn't wouldn't be bad going for both of them. Did you ever get your uh, your keys back from him? You, I heard you saying you left your keys in your car. Ah. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, too true, Dom. Too true. Uh, couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, it's been a, it's been a hot minute, man. It's been a hot uh, minute. It sure has. Let me tell you, that minute has certainly been hot. And speaking of hot, we have Kata making his way through Kaled here. I really thought you were going to go with Bree on that because Magmorm is breathing fire. So it's hot, you know. I got to get better at these segues, <laughs> man. I, oh. Hey, <sighs> don't, don't worry. I, I, don't, I don't know if you remember my segue that I had planned for uh, the, uh, the charity event in December that I asked you if I could do a, a specific segue and you said no. Do you remember what my segue was? <laughs> I have no recollection of this. Uh, so there was the charity event for the American Heart Association, and I, okay. I asked if I could do a segue of, oh, this player is having a stroke of luck. Speaking of strokes, <laughs> by the way, if you guys want to donate towards the American Heart Association, <laughs> and you're like, no, don't say that, dude. Yeah, okay. I, uh, I, I, think I, I stand by that decision in hindsight. I'm pretty sure I stand by it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i thought that was such a good line i'm not gonna lie i thought like that's like great suck you know that honestly like i'll give you props for it but at the same time <laughs> yeah and speaking <laughs> of segues we have kata here uh trying to dunk our friend the the, the knight's cav into the ravine here oh, and uh, unfortunately oh. not having much luck getting him to fall off the edge it seems like he was stuck on the edge of of the bridge and it didn't re -render he is too. simply opting to go for the quit out cheese instead and he gets a first try so paid off for him very yeah. very nice very very nice mm -hmm. not many people know this but uh the the knight's calves horse is actually named segway actually sure it, do you buy that? Okay, wait, hold on. If you if you actually got to name a horse, let's say you just got a horse randomly, what, what would you name it? Dom. <laughs> wait, are you asking for my attention as in like Dom? Oh, or, no, no, no. I would just name it Dom. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's just you know, it's a strong, noble creature. That's that's very nice of you to say. I appreciate that. That's very very kind of you. Uh, mm -hmm. Brie going into her second tunnel, by the way, Celia tunnel for Falling Star Beast. So actually not going for the Precipice Makara, as I thought. Very interesting here. But she yeah, does get a I mean, somber this six. One is, is probably faster. Although this, uh, I got to tell you, this fight does scare me a little bit. Yeah, it is a little scary, but I I, I don't know. After you kind of learn the moveset, it's not too bad. Um, however, with that health bar, it does get a little scary. Uh, it does. I think like half of the moves do one shot. 
And to be honest, in this particular fight, I mean, with, with, with Falling Star Beasts, for me, I think it's more of an arena issue than it is a boss issue. You know, if you put them on a flat ground in an open field, I would be totally, totally down. But uh, a lot of times these arenas are either super uneven or super small, or in this case, both. So it can be a little dicey yeah. to be able to navigate this situation sometimes. Oh, she Does get be... clipped there. Oh, nice. Okay, not too bad. But not she recovers bad. pretty nicely. What do we have Kata doing in the meantime? He's currently in Liurnia, it looks like. He's yep. definitely making his way downtown. And uh, when he's on that torrent, he is walking fast, I would say. Uh, it doesn't do the Dragon Helper check, though. Oh, maybe he will, actually. Never mind, he's right here. Maybe so, maybe so. The thing that's going to be really nice for Bree is that she just got a Sombra 6 from Falling Star Beast. So if she does grab the Sombra 5 from the Ravine outside, she could already plus 6 either the Finger or Death's Poker in this case. And that would be good for the rest of Bingo. It would. I wonder at this point, I don't think Bree has actually upgraded anything. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Catalyst does get the normal Halberd, by the way, at the Dragon okay. Halberd. Oh, well, let's see. Decent Which fight, though. That, you know, these players are starting to narrow down where the Dragon Halberd could be. So if they really wanted it, you know, maybe killing Tree Sentinel in uh, in Limgrave yep. could be a nice place to check that. But it would be kind of a time sink because it probably wouldn't give them progress towards anything. Might be a good late game play if they want to go for that, though. Let me go ahead and but tune in. I'm really in. curious oh. to see what they commit to here. Yeah, I'm going to tune in to Bree here real quick, see what she's thinking and... Got to listen to her boss fight. Hold on. Let's see. Hold on. Pausing. Pausing and champing. She's looking calm, cool, collected as she slowly grinds to a halt here on oh, Dom's stream. Son of a bitch. Things are, uh, she's just, you know, she, she is stone cold in her composure here, uh, some might say. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, calm, cool, collected, trying not to let any sort of pressure get to her yeah getting bbk would be kind of big wait why can't i hear both i don't know dom that is an excellent Let's question well, oh kata has just picked up the stormhawk axe in liernia keep, keep it down over there catalyst i'm trying to hear Bree. <laughs> toxic <laughs> uh okay there we go Fongstar Beast for Bree, by the way. That's her second done, tunnel. Okay, good. Did that, not end that, up uh, uh, losing any unnecessary a time to a death or anything like that. What's she Which thinking? Really good. What is she thinking? Because right that now it's four for four. Boss. Wendy's. That is well, true. Absolutely. Let's go grab this and make our way to Lyrnia. The four for four. Okay, so Excellent she's thinking value. about the face, not value. the black flame. If I okay, so she's going to Liurna, uh, from what she's saying, anyways, and uh, considering doing black flame if she can get that spell uh, with the faith knot from weeping to do Grail. I'm assuming for status effects. That is a nice play. I wonder though if maybe checking the twin blade check in Limgrave might be a quicker way to attain some black flame. It yeah, no one, gamble, no one checked though. that, actually. That's a, that's a good point. No one checked the Twin Blade. That's a, that's but a Kata, very, very I, I imagine Kata's going to be committing to this axe for the rest of the match here. It is extremely strong and has the added benefit of having very little stat requirements. Yeah. So you just, you know, meet the minimum requirements, uh, chuck some upgrades to it, and then go on your way. And he's got 67,000... Smackaroonies, and that's uh, going to be a lot to be able to upgrade to plus four, maybe even plus five, and also level a lot. He's got also a, a Gajic Great Rune activated, which is even more levels, so he's going to be doing a lot of damage now, which is really, really nice. Uh, yeah, he's going to be, I think, damage-wise, he's in a much better position than Bree is, Yeah. so we're going to have to see how he converts that into an advantage here. I definitely agree. It means that uh, some of these later game threats are going to become an option for him sooner than they will for Bree, because Bree just doesn't have the damage to do something like Blackblade Kindred right now. And let's check here real quick. Uh, one of the 
one of the nice things that we can do right now is uh, check the map. You know, let's let's, let's see what the, what's going on here. Wow. Uh, so, so with the board, duelists, right? Catalyst, uh, he should be going for jail caves in my opinion. He already has one of the duelists, right? Go ahead, activate it, get the stone sword key, then do the good old skip to get into uh, the jail cave. That would be best case scenario for him. So, you know, Third Church of America, just go do the good old uh, cliffside skip. That would be really nice. For Bree, she said she's going to Lyurida now. She's going to be doing the Halberd check. And then afterwards, maybe Knight's Cav? You know, you can grab the Knight's Cav uh, over here down at the bridge, the bridge side forest. And then also Knight's the... Knight's Cav is a good option. Knight's However, Cav here. Tata does have the advantage there as he just kills off his second Knight's Cav. So yeah, I guess they're both kind of maybe competing for that. Wow. Uh, we we love some map time. We love it. We didn't get a whole lot of map time yesterday, Dom. Yeah, I know. Well, the thing is, like, with with the map, right, you don't want to overdo it because then it gets less and less exciting if you keep um, using it. That's you true. Know? That's true. Yeah. So whenever you bring it on, you want you want it's like, oh, it's there. That's very true. Yeah. And also half the time, I don't know what to, like, show on the map anyways. It's, you know, it, it it's more, the, it speaks for itself. Ah, yes. I really, I really, you know, GPS technology has never before made its way into the lands between and, and it's still just a beautiful sight to behold. The uh, LED HD 1080p map prototype. Uh, the, it's uh, the Garmin is what it is. It's, it's a Garmin. Um, mm. GPS, I think. Or it could be if they were to sponsor Bingo Brawlers. <laughs> Bree grabbing. Interesting. Actually going for the torch here, by the way, to get access to um, the other side uh, where Grail is, rather than doing Salia Town Skip. This is a, this, I love this play. This is what I was talking about. Bree, a lot of times, ops for consistency over the things that could be risky. Because, you know, if you go to sink some time into Celia Skip, you could end up burning 60 seconds plus if you're uh, if you're not able to perform it super cleanly every single time. It has to be careful here, though, of the rolling balls that come down the hillside. Yeah, very true. Which uh, I'm assuming she is aware of. Uh oh, there we oh. That was a bit of a close jump. Looked like Torrent got stuck there for like a, a, a hot moment. Very nice. You know what? Bree is not afraid of these large rolling balls here. She knows exactly how to make it past them without uh without being in any real danger. Yep. Uh and well with that, I wonder if she's I don't know. I think she might be going for Knight's Cav just to have it, but also having that grace for Grail is gonna be huge. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. Did she pick up any any black flame though? That is uh, an important uh, question. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Well, you know, there there is the chance that maybe she plans on killing the dragons themselves. It's always a possibility. Ooh, Kata performing <sighs> the Burger King skip almost perfectly, but but missing it by a toenail at the very end there. That is brutal. But his reaction time is very quick. So he he managed to secure the quit out and he saved his spot there on that ledge far enough away from the Burger King boys where he is not in any danger. So who do you think, by the way, has the uh, fastest quit out in the West? There have been people, multiple people claiming they have the fastest quit out in Elden Ring. Um, but I do believe that only one person does have the fastest quit out. Uh, I'm curious as to who you think that might be. You know, we, we've seen a lot of talented quit outers in, uh, in this game and it's, it's hard to say it really is. But I think if, if I had to choose one person, I, I could see it being Zoodle. I gotta say he is a very quick witted individual and he does Zoodle intensely mm -hmm. all the time. That's super fair. He's constantly zoodling. That's super I would fair. Say. And I think that zoodling does translate into a faster quit out time. 
It looks like, by the way, Bree using the black knife on Grail, but it doesn't seem like it's doing a lot How of damage. How is that damage? It's not ideal. It, it not is the, putting in the, the work, but it's not... It'll get there eventually. It definitely will. I don't think she's got enough mana for this, to be honest. Oh, she may not. That's looking pretty rough. You think she has any Starlight Shards burning a hole in the back pocket here? Uh, I mean, there is the one pickup that that is, you know, a little bit behind her uh, near thir uh, the, the America Church. But I don't think she grabbed that. Meanwhile, we have Kata going into the Red Doggo fight. What is he looking to accomplish here in the Academy, I wonder? That is a great question. Let's tune in. See what he's thinking. Uh, have a little listen. What do you got to say, Kata? Hopefully he tells us after his fight. Oh, one more jumping out two should do it too, by the way. This could just be his way of securing his way to the capital, which opens up his way into uh, fighting Fia's champions, maybe? Well, we do have the Renala after four summon square in row one as well, so maybe he's just prepping for that. Okay, yeah. And he is, uh, he's blue squares here, so he could hey, what's be up, establishing how you doing, dude? Yeah, this weapon is pretty diagonal. decent, huh? I kind of like it. Uh, I'm going the wrong way. And there he is talking about how uh, how great the Stormhawk Axe is. So we gave it's ourselves... Work, of course. He's going to... Access to Volcano Manor, which will give us plus six as well. Okay. Sir? So he's going, he's, he's going to Volcano Manor now for the Somber 5 and Somber 6 in this case. Um, and then maybe doing a version of Dr. Duo rather than grabbing Dectus. Because he does have a lightning weapon. With where he is right now. And, you know, it also kind of sets up a bit of a late game advantage where if he ends up wanting to go for Rikard's Great Rune, he has an advantage towards, you know, actually defeating Rikard. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's a good prep line he's going for here, I think. It looks like that Bree is... Opting to actually killing the dragons here with the death's poker. Okay. But not doing a lot of damage. Uh, I don't think she upgraded the death's poker at all. She's just still rocking a plus zero death's poker to try and deal with dragon burrow dragons, which is a, a, a very difficult task to complete. Okay, she's pivoting off of that. I, I wonder why she's not upgrading. Maybe she is just worried that as soon as she upgrades the death's poker, she finds a better weapon. And then she's like, ah, oh, great. You know, I could have had Stormhawk Axe, for example, at plus six, but now I have Death's Poker at plus six. I'm stuck with that for the rest of the match. Could be. Could be she may just not have been to uh, Iggy yet and and decided there were things that were more threatening. Yeah, Kata but, yeah. is, is dying here in Volcano Manor. He tried to do the uh, the really hard uh, oh, elevator I love skip. skip. I love this skip. I've I've only seen it once and I still don't know how it works. It's it's like a really it's a very very niche skip for sure. It it involves landing on a piece of the wall that is extremely hard to land on. Repre requires a very precise uh jump angle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like she's going to go for a shield check now or she's just jumping down. She's just jumping she could down. be checking the axe. Maybe. Maybe on her way to Iggy. Grabbing the academy key here, too. She may be recognizing that diagonal threat at this point. Uh, the Oh, the grail with Altus and Record. Yeah. Oh, wait. Okay. You know what? I was a little turned around here. Where is that Renala square? Uh, row one, column two. Row one, column two. Yep, there it is. There it is. Maybe she wants to pivot onto that that uh, row one. Yeah, uh, could be. Could be. Row one, though, that's quite a time investment with both Fia's champions and Moog. I I would love to see the Moog square, though. I. I, I you know, maybe maybe she's taking me up on my bribe and she's going to go for Moog. I I doubt it. I doubt it. I would love to see it though, but I I, I don't I don't think that's going to happen if I'm being honest. Yeah. With it it's a long shot. There's just no there there the lines that that 
Square is a part of are both awful. Lanciax, Blackblade, Kindred, or uh, Fia's Champions, 30 Int. Maybe that's more yeah. of a reason to do it. Because you know the other person isn't going to. Yeah, because of how unpredictable it is. That's interesting. Because of how odd it is. Yeah, like if you're if you're looking at this line, you already have Godric, you already have Nox, uh, Nox Beetle, you already have Box Needle. Um, <laughs> Nox Beetle. Uh, That's dude, a new one. Dude, I don't know why my brain does that sometimes. Like it switches the the first letter and like uh, like on like two words. His his native language is Pig Latin. Okay, shut up some slack. <laughs> And, uh, you know, for, but so looking at column four, right, if you kill Moog, you have enough damage to deal with Lanciax and with BBK, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, the very interesting thing about that Moog square is if you happen to take out the fastest squares on row one and column four, then that means you are forcing your opponent to have to take out a terrible square before they can even claim a victory, whether that's through, uh, whether that's through majority or through a bingo line. I mean, I guess, you know, if they have other bingo lines open, then they could go for that. But but uh, if it comes down to majority, forcing your opponent into going for a Moog kill would be pretty rough. Yeah. I definitely agree. It's going to be very interesting, though, because it looks like Kata is actually going for possibly the diagonal because of Rikard's Great Rune. He's, he's fighting Gotskin Noble right now. This is such a clean noble fight. But maybe it's just uh, a prep. And also it's 50,000 runes, so there's that. Yeah, there's also the chance that he Ooh. is just go. Oh my god. The noble roll. Okay, good roll there. Oh! My, this is the one of the most disgusting noble rolls I've ever seen in my entire life. That and he managed to survive it. Lasted an eternity. Good lord. But... Like I was saying, it may be possible that he just wants to get the Somber 7 here in Volcano Manor so he can get a plus 9 and just cruise his way through the late game. Mm. I think it's... It may, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say it's risky, but it is a very long-term commitment to bingo. Like It's not it is. very common that a player goes for a plus 9 when it's not on the board. Yeah, and it's interesting because you know there's kind of two different philosophies on a, on a huge late game board like this where you could either try to beat your opponent to the quick squares, or you could bank on the fact that they're definitely going for the quick squares and then just, uh, you know, go for something you know that they can't contest. Right. By going for these later game squares. Got roll number two. These are some clean dodges. These are, yeah, this is very... I didn't get stuck. Kata, very fortunate. Kata definitely knows what he's doing here. He's utilizing the pillar there to finish him off. Nice. Very nice fight. Very nice fight. Bree making her way into Raya Lucaria right now. Uh, not grabbing the Sombra 3 behind the altar. Altar? Is that, I'm assuming that's what it is. It's uh, a thing. It's definitely a thing. That's uh, for sure. Uh, okay. She's in the blender, but she, she made it out of the blender just fine. Very interesting. So this is going to be a plus six now for Kata. Plus six Stormhawk Axe. That's huge. He's setting himself up really nicely for a lot of these late game squares. You know, it's rare that we see so many Great Rune restorations on one board. We've seen Godric's Great Rune. We have Rikard's Great Rune and Radon's Great Rune here. The only thing we're missing is Morgoth's Great Rune. The only thing we're missing is a consistent connection with the players. That <laughs> Very true, Dom. <laughs> Having uh having some uh, some tough situations here, but hey, you know what we do we do we do the best that we can. A little buffering never hurt anybody. It's definitely not my computer. It's definitely not. I've I've personally checked Dom's computer and I can certify that it is not his computer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. I checked. Uh I, I checked him PC. I sure yep. did. Yes, sir. Oh, we have Kata now heading towards Dragon Barrow. I'm wondering if he is going to use that upgraded Stormhawk Axe to take out the dragons one by one. That, that would be a play, and it wouldn't be a bad play at all. Because like, like, like we said, he's got a lot of damage. He's got Stormhawk Axe plus six. He's got the stats for it. He's got Godric's Great Rune activated. He's in a really good position to do this very quickly. And he's, that would force all Yeah. 
And it looks like Bree actually going for the elevator here too. Going to so be she's gonna make her way over to Goskin. First yeah. abductors. She may just want to may, may just be wanting to go to Altus as soon as possible. She does have the first half of the deck to I believe. She could have just gone straight to Fort Height instead. Well, maybe she just has a, a similar plan as Kata. Downside though is Kata does have a much bigger lead when it comes to getting a good weapon upgraded. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm uh, I'm a little clueless here. Maybe she's thinking long-term block again, you know, where uh, this could be a Riker's Great Rune block that he might not see coming. And if she hard commits to it, she would be able to get it. Most likely. And think? then she would uh, she would cut off that uh, that diagonal there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, nice roll. A little bit of careful. This is, this is the weird thing with the dragons. <laughs> Look at these is that uh, what is that? Sometimes when they land, by the way, it's like there's a separate hitbox for their body and then their head. Yeah. Uh, so if you roll backwards towards the way they flop their body, you can dodge the body, but then not have enough iframes left to dodge the head and still take full damage and he does roll backwards that is terrifying it it's is very high scary. risk high reward because you do end up closer to their head so you get the bonus damage there but if that hitbox comes out and you roll just a little bit too early you are done it can get because, scary uh, very fast grail's roar means that even with you know 45 50 vigor you're still getting one shot by these dragons grail's roar uh i for gore that is a little bit of a debuff for the that's players. true yeah he he uh i do for gore that's absolutely true yeah oh and also going for noble here I, I yeah i do think that she's thinking records great rune and it, it's it's not a bad play we'll just have to see i hope that she doesn't make the same pivot that kata did where after the noble uh she goes right back to grail but i think at this rate kata is going to get grail down before before she gets the chance to make it back over there. Yeah. Looks like that as soon as she gets done with Noble, that he would be done with uh, the dragons anyways. But, you know, maybe that prompts her to stick around in Volcano Manor for a bit. She's got to be Noble, careful here, though. Still nobling. Doing the noble thing. I remember, like, there's, like, this weird discussion of, like, which they prefer. You know, do they prefer Apostle or Noble when it comes to fighting? And honestly, I'd probably have to say Noble. Oh, I am massively in the Apostle camp, personally. I, I think for me it's Noble just because, like, for Noble, you only have to parry once for Riposte. For God's Apostle, you have to parry twice. And See, I that's why I just don't even bother parrying Apostle. I just, I just Giga Chad fight him. That's fair. That's fair. But, you know, uh, back in the day, I was working on fist-only Elden Ring, and one of the bosses that I fought was the Godskin duo in Mountaintops. Spent, you know, five hours fighting uh, Apostle with fist-only, and ever since then, he's, he, me and him were homies. Mm, that's fair. That's fair. I gotcha. Yeah. Oh, nice little Ash of War there from Bree. Oh, that was nice. That was a lot of damage. Bloody Healus, by the way. Not a bad weapon. That could be a weapon worth oh, plus okay. sixing right there. Yeah, it could. Got a nice move set with some nice bleed on it as well. This might be, I think, Catalyst's fourth dragon. Bloody Hellas is extremely... I mean, it's it's fashionable, too. What can I say? That was his third. With the, uh, the L2. Yeah. But it's... I don't know. I don't, I don't really understand the Ash of War, if I'm being honest, because... I've used it, and the follow-up seems to never really connect with the enemy unless they're running at me. Yeah, honestly, I think it's more of a PvP uh, type of weapon when it comes to the Ash of War, at least. Yeah. This... And it looks like she is making her way down to Virgin Abductors, which means she will be finding her way onto Altus Plateau. One more dragon here, by the way, for Catalyst, and then he can finally hit Grail in the head, and that should be the end of that square and even with a even with a good weapon it uh, is fighting these dragons one by one is it's a slog yeah i i completely understand why most players opt for the black flame route if they can 
uh you could say it is dragging on yeah it, it, yes drag drag yeah. oh yeah <laughs> oh dom wow Hey, you know, Mr. Segway himself, you know, I, I do the best I can, you know. <laughs> and you know, that's why that's why Dom's on commentary every week. That that right there. He's got the wit, the charm. <laughs> what 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 can't this this dominator do? And Josh has got the looks. And here we are, last hit on Grail. Very nice. Very nice. Well played. Well played. He's going to secure himself a lot of runes, a lot of smackaroonies with this play here as well. That's a lot of cash money for sure. Hit the bank for maybe a 30 intelligence square. Ooh, that's a very good point. 30 int starts to put pressure on column five and row one as well. What's that column five looking like here? Uh, I'm surprised to see Bree did not get more dragon heart bosses yeah but look at that damage that's some nice damage that is some nice damage uh i do believe the virgin abductors are weak to magic damage which means that that ash of war is going to be doing a lot of work here against them not just damage like damn edge you know what i mean uh, yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> and here we have oh it looks like that catalyst is actually going for right guard okay I, yeah. Unless he just wants the Somber 7. That's also a possibility. If he wants to go ahead and upgrade to plus 9. Yeah. I don't think he's got the Stone Sword keys for that, though. You do need two Stone Sword keys. That's true. Yeah. And speaking of Stone Sword keys, Bree has made her way up onto Altus Plateau, and she is going to be making progress on some of these later game squares. Yeah, I wonder if she's going to be trying to force uh, six Altus bosses here. It does say including Volcano Manor, but both of them haven't checked the Godskin Noble as a oh. fight. So I wonder if they are keeping that in mind that they both that may not have. even be on their radar. Bree, in this case, has two. Virgin Abductor Duo and Noble. Yeah, very true. Kata about to have two for himself as well. I imagine Bree's going to be taking on uh, this. What, what is this boss's name? Margo? Gilica. Mar, 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 uh, Gilica? Gilica? Oh, yeah, it's Gilica. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's uh, Maggie Lovely and Margo. Lady. They're in Mount Gelmir. And then uh, Gilica's here just hanging out. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I mean, this is a really, this is a very nice boss to go for. Uh, she's super squishy. She gives a really good talisman. What's not to love? And she's also one of the uh, demi-human queens that uh, actually yells at you when you deal enough damage, which is really nice because it gives you a good enough window to deal even more damage. Yeah, I, we do love getting yelled at. There yeah, it yes, is. Sir. There's the Absolutely. yell. Absolutely. How dare you? And dead. Throwing the staff and everything. Throwing a tantrum. Meanwhile, Kata here on Rikard, the God Devouring Serpent. Hopefully, we don't see any memes. A There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong on this fight. All right, we're tuning in here real quick. Must be the new ray tracing update. Some ray tracing update? I don't know what he's talking about. That was a good first yeah, phase, very I, nicely though. I wouldn't know anything about ray tracing. I'm over here with a. With a 2080. I guess I only have a heal in that physic, actually. Good phase <laughs> so one. Just kind of wasted that one. Okay, phase two. It's going to be kind of scary. With this damage, phase two is always scary. Yeah, phase two is always a little... Yeah, especially those fast sword attacks, man. If you aren't ready uh, for those sword okay, attacks, I'm that can the definitely get a lot so of damage. I can interrupt this particular attack. Now we're going to switch to shield. Okay, I think that's very smart to interrupt the, uh, the fireball. Yep, I agree. It's a very annoying attack. I do wonder if Has he... Has a tendency to just hang out in the floor and kill you without you seeing it. Yeah, exactly. I do wonder if he's aware of the... Uh, Don't hit me, dude. The stun lock for... Good. Um, he hasn't done any combos, so there's not going to be any Inferno. 
the, uh, the sun lock for the uh, ultimate move. Yeah, I wonder. Because I believe that stagger is on a cooldown, so if you do it uh, too close to when he does that ultimate move, uh, you won't be able to stagger him for it. Yep. Although, I've, I, I, yeah, to my understanding, if you do the Ash of War stagger, and then you do a, a, a normal stagger afterwards, but it resets that cooldown. There you go. Okay, that makes sense. But we're not even going to see that move come out. No, that thankfully. was a great fight by Catalyst. Great fight. Absolutely Very great clean. fight. And there he goes marking the uh, the six Altus bosses as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's going to mark those two. And then maybe so go for Virtue of Doctors now. next. That's three. So that's that's huge. Looks like Bree is on her way to the Godskin Apostle. The, uh, the uh, Apostle. Words. You got it, man. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sure did. First try. No, definitely. I think Apostle is a great play here. Yep. Gets progress towards the Altus bosses and also marks off a square there. I'm so but surprised that... Uh, sorry. It's more of a majority play. Uh, well, maybe she can get that six Altus bosses first and block that diagonal, which would be pretty pretty important. Yeah. I, I think I think here is also I'm I'm so surprised no one's checked the twin blades for the uh, Godskin peeler for the Grail square. It would have made a huge difference for yeah. sure for both of them. Yeah. Because even with that highly upgraded Stormhawk axe, Kata sunk. Probably a good five or six minutes into that, at least. Doesn't have any sleep pots, though, it looks like. So she's going to be doing this uh, with just uh, casting the Ash of War. Does get the Frost she proc, though. Just, she, she's just raw dogging the Apostle here. Not going for the safer sleep pot strat. It's always funny to um, do the sleep pot strat on, win on the Windmill Village Apostle because you can jump around and then just stand right behind him. And he just doesn't know. Yeah. Which is just very silly. He he's a goofy little guy. I mean, look at him. He's made of spaghetti right now. Yeah. I, what, like, what do you think the training regiment is for Godskin Apostle to increase stretchiness? A lot of yoga. No, that is yoga. I, I completely. That's why. That's why he's in Windmill Village. You know, at the top, having a nice view. You know, mm -hmm. having the whole uh, yoga aesthetic of uh, being at peace. Yeah, very similar to how I spend my mornings, honestly. Yoga. I don't and know. there, there, uh, Bree is marking the Godskin Apostle Square, but now. Kata probably has a good idea that Bree is at, on Altus. He knows there's a chance she could have done that in Kaled, but, you know, an hour and nine minutes in, most likely that's an Altus. Oh! Kata got true comboed into the grab. Yeah, that was rough. If you jump that... He was that... waiting to dodge it, but he got clipped by the other abductor there. Look, is she going for worm face right now? That is a ballsy move if she is. I know that she has practiced Worm Face recently, so maybe she has some strats to make this fight a little bit less scary, but I have seen Worm Face uh, do some real damage. Worm Face is mean. Worm Face is yeah. so mean. Even if he's not, like, super tanky, it's just a mean fight for sure. And he's got all of these uh, these air tree guardians around him as well that just throw a wrench into things. You know, sometimes they can true combo you into his grab attack. Yeah, if there's one thing Wormface is good at, I think it's making players panic. And so if you are really knowledgeable about his moveset, which I'm assuming Bree is, uh, I think you can work around it. Yeah. It's got to be and careful. And it looks like she's got a plan here. One more charged R2 should knock him to the ground here. Does dodge the uh, strafe attack here. Very nice. Just jump R2. Oh, Expected that to stagger. There we go. Huge damage I do wonder on the head. if Very nice. the charge R2 from the Death's Poker is maybe throwing a wrench into her plans a little bit because of how trash it is. It's weird. It's so bad. Nice fight by Catalyst, though. It does clear the version of Ductors with uh, Stormhawk Axe, which uh, quick work. They, they are weak to lightning, and also there is water in the arena. So that yeah, is it just double bonus. Completely deletes them from existence. You can go for Tibia Mariner right now and then go straight to Gillica afterwards. And it looks like Bree is maybe going to be 
doing this cave here. This is for the... Where is he going? He just... <laughs> is this a smithing stone bell bearing or is this a somber stone? Somber, somber. I thought I was thinking it was somber. So she must just be coming in here for the boss then. Yep. Uh, it's a very quick tunnel. Yeah. I wonder if she's going to be doing the the scary elevator skip here. Oh, there's an elevator skip for this one. There's the door already. Oh, well, you know, I definitely know where we are right now. That's for that's for certain. Yeah, Absolutely. for for people for people like Josh that maybe are are a little lost currently as to where we are on the map. Don't worry, don't fret. We are currently actually in Altus, which is this tunnel uh, right yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, the the one place that uh, Josh is thinking of is this tunnel right here. Very very understandable to get that mixed up. Don't even worry. Uh, so we're not here. We're over here in Altus, which is going to be uh, Breeze, I believe, sixth boss in this case. I really, um, I'm happy to have provided a lovely segue into that map segment there. So you're, 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 you're welcome. I get it. I get it. Chatters out there. I look, I, I've got your best interest at, at heart here. Just, just looking out for you. I do wonder if, uh, if Catalyst is aware that he might lose six bosses in Altus and is maybe okay with that. I don't know. I mean, he, he's got to know he's at a disadvantage with uh, seeing Bree tag that Godskin Apostle square. And there it is. Getting that really juicy diagonal block. And looking at the scoreboard here, we are tied up. Which is, it's crazy because Kata started this game with such an imp like immense presence on that column, or on that row three. Yep. And, you know, if he had prioritized getting those three NPC invaders, this this match might be looking a lot different. I honestly think going for that noble fight, see, I mean, it did give him the Rikard access, so he does have that diagonal. I think he was really considering the whole combination of uh, going for Volcano Manor fights into going for some Altus fights and then using the Rikard Tunnel boss, which is the Onyx Lord, as his final sixth boss, and then also restore the Rikard Great Rune as a nice little wombo combo bingo. But uh, in it, this case, it's, uh, a, it's a very powerful play. But unfortunately, he was just a little slow yep, getting exactly. to it. And it looks like maybe. What do you think he's up to now? Making his way towards Lanedale, perhaps. Honestly. Hmm. Maybe just grabbing the uh, the grace for later for Goldfree, and Margaret's Mook shackles. Not a bad idea. I I would wonder though if it might just be. Better to rush that Rikard's Great Rune at this point. Yeah, I'm not sure. What if he does Lanciax? Just he like could. out of pure enjoyment of the square, being like, "Hey, I'm right next to Lanciax. Let's just do that." Well, I mean, the interesting thing here is, as the game is going on, we are getting uh, increasingly closer to a potential majority win here so if he goes for lanciax and he goes for black blade kindred and he gets that before brie can that forces brie into having to kill moog lord of blood to secure her majority victory and that is a massive time sink so that could be uh could be very very dicey for her if she doesn't see that coming yeah hey okay where is he going interesting looks like he's just making his way to the capital right now gonna go cheese possibly dts I mean, Why? something that could be happening here, this is something that I did a lot uh, in season one, was I, I saw a route, you know, that gets me closer to a square that's on the board, uh, and it does take a while. And honestly, you could just use that time to think. Mm. So if he, if he recognizes, like, I just need time to think, and I need to be making progress towards something while I'm thinking, you know, maybe he just picks something and he goes for it. Did he maybe just realize, by the way, that he lost <laughs> the square? I did see him face palm there. I wonder if he was going for DTS as a as, as one of his six bosses. Yeah, I I, I wonder what he just realized. Like, we did just miss that. He just remembered that he's blue and not red. All right. <laughs> well, that is something that we sadly can't fix on our end. Um. <laughs> You but, know, I've seen this happen in Breeze matches specifically. 
in Bree's matches, either Bree or her opponent just forgets what color they are. It just happens so much. I've seen it a ton in practice. Such an odd thing. Happens all the time. <laughs> Such an odd thing. But hey, really nice DTS cheese here from Catalyst. Does already... Wait, he has... Oh, right, that makes sense. Yeah, he killed Riker. Uh, Red has access to the capital. Uh, I don't think going for gold for here would be worth it for him in this case. But, uh, doesn't accomplish much other than just getting a, a square on the board. Yeah, I think going for, honestly, going for Black Blade Kindred might not be bad because then you have two squares that Bree absolutely hates, which is Lanciax and Moog. Well, she loves Moog, but it's just, it's long distance. Yeah. Honestly, I, I do think that there's a chance that if he just went Black Blade Kindred and Lanciax, I think that might just secure a victory for him. It, it would give him the time to do uh, other squares. Or he could just prioritize uh, prioritize getting Moog. He could just do the double bluff and commit to it. The bluff bluff. I don't know. I, I, I personally, I like actually doing the quest line and then actually fighting Moog. I personally. do too. I really do. Uh, and I've done it quite, a, uh, like I think twice now in bingo. And both times it was rewarding and it turned into a very interesting match. So I want to see that more often from the players too. Being like, you know what? Let yeah, me absolutely. Go, let me go for it. Let me try it out. I mean, that's the thing about Bingus. Like, the sometimes the goal really is to just get a bingo. Oh! Here we see Bree. Everyone start your timers. Let's see how long it takes to get these four summons out here. Does have Wolves and Bloodhound Knight already out. We are two for two. Can we see the fabled four for four, perhaps? We saw one yesterday from Aggie. Let's see if it happens again today. Could Renala be in a good mood this weekend? And here we go. There is the three giant. For three. All we need is the dragon. And then she can confidently finish out the square. What is Catalyst going for here? I I don't know. I'm not sure. And yeah, four for four. There's the dragon. Wow. Very the nice. Renala RNG this weekend has been extremely blessed. Renala has been enjoying some Wendy's. That's for sure. Good old for... Oh! Catalyst falling off the map side here. Kata to... experiencing some L plus ratio, plus he fell off. That is so weird. What What? What the... What is, oh. I, bri I was very briefly concerned that he might be going for the... Oh, uh, steak, steak skip. skip. <laughs> but obviously it's not allowed here in this format. Uh, thank God. Looks like he was just making his way along the cliffside and uh, jumped down a little too eagerly. Hmm. Also, grabbing the grace here might not be a bad idea because uh, then he can go for duelists afterwards. He still has that one duelist in his pocket. What are you, what are you drinking, by the way? Like caramel milk? Uh, water. What? How is that? That is not water. <laughs> that is beige. <laughs> It's coffee. Okay, I wasn't dude. There's no way your water is that dirty. <laughs> Holy. We do a little gaslighting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's not going for... Oh, okay, no. Looks like he's just making his way down to Radon here. Yep. There is Restore Radon's Great Ruin on Road 2. I think he's just worried about possible bingos now for Bree. Just blocking anything po like possible for her, forcing majority. Yeah. So what, what does he need to block left? Is he needs to block row two and column five. And I think that's it. I'm yeah, amazed Bree, he hasn't finished the duelists. Bree going for Black Blade Kindred here. Very interesting. This is good Black for her, Blade though. Black Kindred always makes me nervous. She's got a decently <laughs> sized H HP bar here, but she's she's not surviving more than one hit. But I trust that Bree has practiced this fight a lot. Really nice stagger there. And also what's really good for her weapon is that it does have uh, magic on there too, you know? Yep. Then they are they are weak to magic damage. Let's see if she gets the opportunity to get any L2, uh, L2R1 action here. Oh, that's a scary dodge. I agree. I definitely agree. This also this move right here can have a really weird hitbox sometimes. Yeah, I think it lingers just a little bit. 
like right are. near the handle. Yep. That one too. Do have the Radon fight coming up here for Catalyst as well. You gotta imagine Bree wants to grab 30 int at some point. It synergizes with her her weapon skill a ton. I don't know, but it is really interesting to see that both players aren't really considering their own lines, but are just going for blocks instead. Like, they both want majority. Yeah, it's, it's very... This has been a very reactive game yeah. so far. Yeah. It's surprising to see. Okay. Uh, Blackblade Kindred has decided to go on a little field trip, apparently. Uh... <laughs> Just, uh, he's where where is he going does that oh, whoa yeah. just jump <laughs> through the ground wow uh black Lake kindred are you okay there friend that um, was something that's not really how the how solids work most of the time that was something brie is unfazed though she has the focus face on you know after playing elden ring for a year and a half you've seen so many things go wrong they're just like you know what that's just another Day at the job. Another day at the office, yeah. you know? Whatever happens, happens. You know, we saw, we saw Kata... Uh, Godric stubbed his toe on Kata earlier, and it, it lost him a, a no-hit square. So, you know, <laughs> thing, things happen. That was the weirdest hit I've ever seen. Nice uh, fight, though, there from Brie from BBK. And that nice fight here clean. from uh, Catalyst. Uh, almost in Phase 2 already. Not using the summons, either. Here it is, Phase... Two. This has been a really great game so far. I love to see games where there aren't too many deaths from the players and they just get to focus on the strategy and they, they don't really have any difficulty getting past the boss fights. Mm. It's just strictly whoever has the better strategy comes out on top. There you go. Very nice damage. That plus six Stormhawk is doing work. Don't call it a curse, okay? We've already established that I exclusively bless players. Um, it, there's just sometimes a little bit of uh, service carrier time ah. to, to get to the players. All right. Nice stagger here. Very nice fight from uh, Catalyst. Good fight in Phase 2. A lot of players not as comfortable with that Radon Phase 2, but Kata taking care of it, no problem. Not even using the summons either. I'm so, I don't know. I'm I'm confused. I'm confused we're, by some of these choices. We're we're in a very strange position in this match. Now Bree's going for Radon as well. That's that's bizarre. It's like there are Smithing Stone, Bellabongs one and two, easy pickup, right? We had NPC bosses there's there for the quite end. some time. You have Dragonheart bosses still on the board, which is like a Gil, Magma Worm. And then Smarag, yeah. if you really wanted. Yeah. What to. are all the What are all these early game boss or early game squares still doing on the board at this point? I, What's I, going on? That's what, it's a really confusing game. Still got smithing stones hanging out there. Like what What is this? Catalyst just uh, also marking intelligence square. By the way. The cool thing about the uh, the int and faith squares that I really like is that it doesn't tell your opponent where you are. Yeah. It's, I agree. It, and so, although Kata just managed to, to take out Radon, he's made a lot of progress towards restoring that Radon's great rune. Bree has no idea. All she knows is that he just got enough runes to secure that 30 int. All she knows is that uh, they're both really focused. Uh, so much that they're, they're not moving. Um, That's right. It's just stone cold. So, okay, Somebody she actually moved away from Radon, by the way, and actually is going for uh, Smarag now. I think it's 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 high time she finishes those those dragon heart bosses at this point. Yeah. She's taken out uh one or two. I don't remember. She took out Magma Worm and that I believe was it. She hasn't I think done it was just Gilead. one Magma Worm. Yeah. yeah. Nice roll. It's interesting to see her go for Smarog first instead of a Gil. Uh and here is Catalyst now going for that Restore Radon's Great Rune. Uh, as per okay. his uh, last match with uh, Bushy, he did hold on to this for a really long time, and now is going for it right away. Uh, like you said, he'd probably never do that again, and uh, seems like he is a man of his word. He is worried about possibly losing that. And we saw the exact same thing with the Godric Great Rune as well. Yep. Which I think is a good thing. Yeah, I think so. 
Bree is going to have to figure out how to respond on uh, column five. And it looks like she's just going to do so with the three Dragonheart bosses. Yep, that would be, I believe, her last block as well. And then she Which has Kata. Oh, Kata's going to have the block on row two. Yeah, these players are not even really going for any threats in terms of bingos. They're just going for blocks. Mm -hmm. This is a they block both on want block. a majority game. That's interesting. I, I honestly, I wouldn't have expected, you know, usually you have one player kind of trying to rush a bingo and one player trying to rush a majority. You don't always see both players wanting to force majority so in, so heavily here. Yeah. With 30 minutes left, I think we still have hope for Moog. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. There's a chance. There's, we there, there, to, we, we, we have, have, have Smithing Stone 1 and 2 still on the board in an hour and 30 minutes. There is no way we're going to have Moog. I believe. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Let me have this, Dom. Let me have this. Going to round table here. He's grabbing some Stone Sword keys, I assume, for uh, Duelists. That is three Dragonheart okay. bosses now for Breek. Kata should see that on the board. He's going for duel. And now it kind of makes you wonder if maybe he should have prioritized going for that uh, column five there. Because, I mean, if we're looking at a race between column five and row two, you know, he if, if he's worried about row two... I feel like the Dragonheart bosses would have been would have been a better row two block there. Yeah, no, but I agree. I definitely agree. Obviously he didn't have priority on that, and there's a good chance Bree would have gotten there first. Bree getting uh catapulted off of her horse. Uh sure I'm sure that was uh a part of the plan. Looks like Bree's heading over to Lanciax, maybe. Oh, um. Uh, I think she's just grabbing the inner grace here. The inner wall grace. Oh, knocked off the horse again. <laughs> these these are these uh, catapultists are showing no mercy. They're really good at aiming. I really the torrent is having a bad time. I've always really wondered, to be honest, how do you aim with a catapult that like accurately anyways? Do you have, uh, you know, because you have to keep everything in mind. Does wind actually play a factor at all when it comes to throwing huge rocks through the air, or does it just cut through the air that it doesn't really matter? It's called the Pythagorean Theorem, I believe. Sure. Yeah, it was... Uh, I believe Pythagoras was was the one that came up with the, uh, the, 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 the... how to determine the trajectory of a trebuchet's projectile in the air uh, on a windy day at noon on uh, Wednesdays. <laughs> Ah, specifically Wednesdays. That's gotta be so, really weird uh, combat. Pay your respects to Pythagoras. All right, that guy. He knew. He knew what was up, <laughs> and he knew what was far. He sure did. Could <laughs> absolutely. <Dom. laughs> so, so right you are. And uh, here we have Kata looking like he's going to finally secure that last duelist. Probably a very good play from him. Uh, it looks like our players are now going to be trying to secure the rest of these early game squares now that we are at the very end of the match. Did you know, by the way, yesterday when I said the whole uh, bronze weapons were the first thing, I actually got um actually in my YouTube comments. of like, um actually, it was copper that was the first... I don't care. It was a joke. But no, all I, right. I, I checked my history books. Uh, that commenter was wrong. <laughs> and I stand by that. All right. YouTube commenter, if you're watching this, you know. Watching you. We're watching you. I, 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 yeah, I didn't know we were a history channel on top of uh, a, a competitive bingo league. <laughs> Apparently so. Apparently we are. <laughs> we have Pythagoras and bronze weapons. Yeah. You guys are learning so much. The most educational bingo tournament on Twitch here. Wow. That was a wow. really fast <laughs> fight. duelist that, fight there. That duelist. Um, poor guy. Never saw it coming. 
Very, very nice. Never stood a chance. So that is the... Yeah, that's... that's that's Yeah, that's... Majority so for both. An hour and a half in, it's nine to nine. Capital skip. It's anybody's game. Capital skip. <gasps> he lands it! First try, that's huge. Very nice. I imagine Kata is going to go for these two Landell squares and then maybe convert that into a Fia's Champion kill as well, if he can, if he has time, that is. What's really that's interesting... Oh, Morgoth first as well. The the really interesting here thing, uh, thing here is, too, is that they're not racing each other to any other squares left over. No. It's Bree going for a Smithic Stone, Bellar Bellings 1 and 2, and Kata, I'm assuming, going for Gold Free, and then maybe into Shackles. Yeah, it's funny to see them both go for, like, squares that are going to be uncontested. Okay, here's here's my prediction, all right? Kata goes for Gold Free, grabs the Moog Shackle. Uh, Bree is going to get Smithing Soul Bell Brings 1 and 2. Kata mm -hmm. is going to go and restore Rikard's Great Rune. It's going to be a majority win on Landsax, whoever kills that boss first. Or Moog. Nope, it's, it's, it's Landsax. <laughs> Lance, yeah. But here's the thing. Okay, here's the deal. Okay, maybe they both they both have taken this this play style of not wanting to go for things that are going to be potentially contested. Lance Yax, as you mentioned, is obviously going to be contested. They could both think to themselves, okay, Lance Yax is, is going to be contested here. I want to go for something uncontested. And then they go for Moog. They end up both going for Moog because it's the mind games, Dom. To my understanding, completing the whole Moog quest line and fighting Moog takes around 15 minutes. Yeah. We have 27. So you're saying there's there's a chance? I am saying there is a chance. I'm saying it's very unlikely. Well, you know what they say, Dom. Never say never when it comes to Bingus. The Bingus do be bongus. And that is something that you cannot deny, Dom. Sure. I, I, I do agree. I definitely agree. Absolutely. And speaking of Bingus bongus, uh, Cat is climbing a tree. Okay, I was really expecting something else. Uh, what did you wait? What were you expecting? I, I, like that the uh, Bree got the first Smithic Stone bell bearing. I guess I like that. What does that have any, anything to do with? Oh, because it's actually like a square. Well, it's thing. actually like something mm -hmm. that climbing a tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, yeah, and, I'm not uh, very good at this, Dom. I'm sorry. <laughs> I look. I. I'll, I'll, look, I'll do better next week. Okay. <laughs> don't, fine. Please don't fire me, Dom. Don't fire uh, me. <laughs> I need this job. Oh man. This coat was a rental. <laughs> I have to have it back by Thursday. A <laughs> uh, gold free here. Uh, he's gold, and he's he's, he's free. free. <laughs> I knew sure. you were gonna say that. Oh god, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Oh, that's absolutely right, Dom. You took the words right out of my mouth. What can I say? Oh. Yep. I, okay. Yep. 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 Yep, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh, and uh -huh. uh, this being a very interesting uh, fight, by the way. I, I wonder how comfortable Kata is with this. Oh, uh, yes. So comfortable that everything has, has decided to take a break, actually, it looks like. Uh, the entire broadcast has... Uh, decided that that it is just taking a comfy little moment to chillax and uh, remind everyone that uh, you can buy uh, Bingo Brawler's merch <laughs> with the exclamation point merch command. So do check that out when you get the chance to support the beautiful broadcast here and uh, all of the hard work that has gone into this incredible season. And uh, kind of being at such low health makes me very sweaty. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know why some players do that. It is terrifying. But here we have it. Uh, 10 squares, 10. That's a weird sentence uh, for both. Uh, absolutely. 10 players, 10 for both. Yes, sir. That is, uh, yeah, that is actually insane that uh, we're going down to possibly Lanciax in this case. Yeah, Lanciax or Moog. It's, uh, and nobody could really... I, I accurately predict which one it'll be. Uh, looks like Catalyst is moving towards Landsex. And hey, you know, would you look at that? You know what we haven't actually considered 
in this situation, Dom. Mm. With kind of the late game nature of the squares here and only 23 and a half minutes to go, there is a chance that we don't see a majority or a bingo. Well, we'll see majority. We're, we're, are you saying a tie? No, I'm saying the time that we could reach time before someone hits 13. Well, someone still wins by majority then. Well, somebody wins by having more than the opponent, but they don't win by having the majority of the squares on the board, Dom. Uh, and so, you know, it looks like it's nighttime currently forecast for Chat the lands between. Oh, holy hell. Uh, lands between forecast looking a little bit cloudy uh, with a chance of a, mm. a, a, a Lancet's Dragon for coming from the sky about a 60% chance. By the way, I learned something the other day from forecasting, yes. which I thought was very interesting. So when it says there's a 60% chance of rain, it is not that there is a chance that rain is going to happen. It's that rain is happening at 60% of the area. So if they're saying, oh, you know, Wisconsin's going to get rain, for example, there's 60% chance of it getting rain. It is that 60% of Wisconsin is going to have rain. The other 40 won't. Apparently. Apparently. Which is weird. Wow. Unless Twitter lies to me, which, you know, it is the interwebs. So there's that, too. This has been meteorology here at Bingo Brawlers. And uh, Kata having and a, what really a great interesting... what a great meteorology moment it has been. What is Catalyst doing here, by the way? Uh, he's, he seems to be hiding and running. Maybe he's got a cheese brewing here. Yeah, is there a gravity cheese here? Are we, are we seeing a new cheese here, potentially? Now, something very interesting about what's happening here. Uh, I, I saw a moment ago, it appears to still be the case. If you look at Kata's screen, it is raining. Uh-huh. Which, as you mentioned, it is raining across 60% of the lands between at the moment. That was a hitbox. How in the... A hitbox or a lack thereof. Hey, excuse but... me. Kata has a lightning weapon. He just rode and through when, fire. What? Uh, what is? Like what when is it's Braveheart? raining, lightning does fifteen percent more damage because the boss is wet, which could come into play here. It actually could come into play. Look at these HP bars as they're lining up closer and closer. I don't know. Think about it this way: Landsex has lightning on herself, though. Wouldn't that get rid of the any water that touches her? Kind of like a like a like a uh, water-resistant jacket. Do you think l lightning is like the opposite of? Do you like dry yourself off by like what? sticking a a fork in the in the uh, in the wall it's, socket? Well, okay, look, it's on her body, dude. It's Dom like, gets out the shower and he immediately sticks sticks a fork right in the right, right in the wall <laughs> socket and he's like, "All right, I'm all dried off." That is so go. different. That is so different. That is not what I'm saying. Also, I, oh my god, talk about this electrifying gameplay. Bree has not secured the kill yet. There it there is. is. There and it is. The mark. That could completely change the outcome of this game that could totally secure the victory for Bree unless Kata has a way to respond to it Kata does have Rikard's uh, great rune he already killed Rikard she's going for Rikard right now but he already he has killed Rikard him. prepped he also has access to Landell he has advantage on Margit and Moog's shackles so what does Bree do Bree really needed that square but she ha she's at a disadvantage at all of the rest of the squares on the board except for do you know what I'm going to say? Except for... He is champions. I was going to say Moog, but um, that was a good guess. That, that was, was a... the only thing I could have guessed besides Moog. Yeah, that, I mean, it was a it was close, but it was also as wrong as you could have possibly been. Mm, mm. But, you know... But uh, two wrongs do make a right, as... and in this case... 
Absolutely. And speaking I was of wrong light, once. <laughs> we have Bree here in the Volcano Manor. She has jumped right past that lizard. <laughs> mm, yes. Yes. Am I right? <laughs> Meanwhile, Kata is in the sewers. Making his way to some lobster. Lobster. I imagine he's going for that Moog's shackle here. You know, two wrongs uh, make it leaving. right, but also uh, three rights make a left. Four rights make a four. Four rights make a left. Right, right. No, three rights make a left. Three. I had to draw it out in my head. Sorry, it took a hot minute. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. And speaking of left, what is left here on the board <laughs> is going to be very difficult for these contestants to secure uh, in their efforts to win majority in the last 18 minutes of our match here. Okay, so it looks like that cat did pivot off again from Shackles going to Riker now. Uh, restoring Riker's great rune. And I'm sure Bree is going to be rudely interrupted on her Riker fight here and have to pivot. That's a huge time sink for sure. This is this is a really interesting situation because I think that the longer Kata spends on this fight, the better it or the on this rune, the better it ends up being for him, because Bree will have less time to pivot after seeing him claim that square. Uh, 17 minutes left. This is one of those rare situations where slow may actually be fast. Unfortunately for Kata, he is known for being fast. This is a tortoise and the hare situation. Absolutely. This could. This is going to be... We have 15 minutes left. I do believe Kata wins this 12 to 11. Because Kata has priority on Shackles. He's going to restore Riker's yeah. Rune here. And then go straight back to capital, grab the shackle, kill Patches, bada bing, bada boom. He doesn't have to kill Patches because Patches is already dead. He killed Riker. He just has to go into the uh, cave and grab it. Spoilers. Sorry. So uh, a very important that. NPC is uh, what? What? Yes. Dom, we're doing a great job. I got to say what a pleasure it is to be here on commentary <laughs> with you today. What a pressure. A pre okay. A pressure, indeed. Yeah, that too. Also uh, that. You know what? I'm done. Like, I don't know what's going on. Half the time, I feel like I just lose brain cells talking. You know that one movie with Will Smith? The more he talks, the, the like, he only has a certain amount of words, and then he, like, dies. Like, that's, like, me, but every single time I talk, I lose brain cells. And at some point, I'm just going to be stupid and just, like, a vegetable. Well, Dom, I I think we may be well past that point. And, uh, <laughs> but let me tell you, I, I am enjoying my time here nonetheless. It is, it is a pleasure to be chatting with you because, frankly, I think it's nice to have somebody that's on my level here. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. you. And here we yeah. are running towards Rikard's Divine Tower. Going to be activating that great rune. Yeah, and Bree, I wonder if she'll be quitting out right away or if she'll try to secure the the kill here and maybe try to convert that into some advantage but with only 15 minutes left i think the quit out is probably the better play <laughs> this is an unfortunate time loss for brie she already has two remembrances so this doesn't even give her uh, Landell access that she didn't have before. This was an this was honestly a really interesting tr strategic play from Kata, where he prepped the Moog shackle. I, I think that was a really nice play on his part. I I honestly didn't see this coming, especially with Bree grabbing that Landsack square before Kata. Yeah, that was huge. Uh, I do think that Riker's Great Rune definitely uh, was super effective. And she does just get the kill on Riker right as wow. he actually marks it. That, so, that it like wasted the optimal amount of time for Kata. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is looking very tough for Bree because she doesn't even have capital access yet. She's going to have to figure out what to do in the next 14 minutes. And frankly, there is not a lot that she can do to recover this. 
Doing two little drop downs here. Although, oh, there is a chance that we could see a 12-12 ending here if Bree actually doesn't go for the shackles. Bree needs to not go for the shackles here because there's no shot she gets there first. She needs to get to Fia's champions or Moog. That is Bree's only chance, I feel like, at this point in order to actually make a 12-12 tie. Well, the only problem with that is that getting to Fia's champions, you either have to kill uh, Morgoth and then Sewer Moog and then get to Fia's. Oh, and he gets lobstered. Oh, my God. So you're saying there's a chance? If this happens for another 13 minutes, yes. This could be the upset of the century. It'd be, yeah, it'd be hilarious. You know, this is, strangely, uh, yeah. I, I do think that... Yeah, with the time she sunk into... The Radon, or sorry, the Rikard. I don't think she has time for Moog anymore. But yeah, frankly, I think Moog would have been her best play for securing a 12-12 tie. I agree. I agree. She should have taken the bribe. I didn't bribe anybody. I just got, we got to clear this up. I didn't bribe anybody. Look, I know the YouTube commenters are going to be like, did Yojo actually bribe the players? Not cool. I would never. All right. Got to maintain the sanctity of Bingus. She's not getting the DTS cheese that she needs right now for capital access. Does get the parry here, though, but DTS is really far away from the edge what? here. Also, doesn't get the stagger. It was a little too he, slow. He shrugged it off. Yeah. He didn't care at all. I mean, he does have a lot of armor. Okay, and unfortunately, he uh, did not go off the cliff. Oh! <sighs> Careful there. Looks like Kata making his way into the Patches Cave to secure the 12th square. Oh, there we go. Bree finally getting the DTS cheese. Has capital access, but yeah, going for Shackles here is definitely going to not work out for her this is going to be uh, a square uh for catalyst in the next 30 seconds yeah we're gonna need to figure out what to do with the last 10 minutes of this match here i mean if if you're brie in this situation what can you do in the last 10 minutes You'd, ha you'd have to be the fastest runner ever to either get to Fia's champions or Moog. I don't even think the fastest runner could get there. Because you'd have to go either all the way through Dacron, Mimic, Valiant Gargoyles. Yeah, she'd have to kill Gold for you and Morgoth as well if she wanted to go the alternate route to Fia's champions. Yep. Otherwise, she's got to do Vare's quest faster than anyone has ever done it before. Kata doesn't have any money, so he starts just selling everything that he has, all of his prized possessions, to Hugh. <laughs> Which, what, what is he going to do with that anyways? You're selling everything to the one man that's chained to the house. He runs a very lucrative pawn shop, actually. Mm. It's, uh runs it out the back of Round Table Hold. Instead of uh, Pawn Stars, it's uh, Land Stars. I still does not have the cash. I think he needs 4,000. At this point, he should just sell his weapon. <laughs> yeah, and they just stand there for 10 minutes? <laughs> I was like, well, there goes, there goes my wow. only usable thing here. The, this match is... Something. Coming down to the wire. Oh, he's got enough money now, though. As long as his game doesn't crash and corrupt his save file in the next uh, 10 seconds, I think he's got this. And there we go. That is the square for Kata. 12 to 11. Fia's champs or Moog of Blood. Nine minutes left on the board. Um, All right, come on, Bree. What do you have in your back pocket? There, there, There's nothing, really. Like, 
Like, there's just no time. Definitely appears that way. Oh, this is a shame. But she's still running with purpose and determination. Cat Eye going for Moog in this case. Who? Oh, uh, Morgoth. I'm sorry. It's their brothers. I'm sure they get. I'm sure they get it all the time. Probably. Yeah. They're both M. Yeah. Right. I, I'm sure it. You know, it happens with the two of us too. Uh, people call me Dom all the time. Ah, uh, yeah. People it call happens. me uh, uh, Cat Boy all the time too. So. <laughs> I. It's, that you are absolutely right, Dom. Couldn't agree with you more there. <laughs> when is that? Uh, when is that cat boy stream coming? By the way, Dom. Uh, not on my end, but I believe maybe on your end soon. I don't know. Uh, no, I don't really participate in that sort of um, hooligan shenanigans personally. <laughs> hooligan. I like to, I like to keep things very professional. Mm. As as you can see by my uh, my bow tie, which uh, believe it or not, I tied myself. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks really really good. Not even the clip on. We're keeping it nice and classy here on season two bingo brawlers. Looks like Bree is making her way to gold free, which I imagine. You know, she sees that her her only hope, although it may not be super plausible for her to get there, is to try and make it to Fia's champions. But uh, at this point, I mean, it even seems like Kata has an advantage on that fight as well. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Let me and you know, this... Go ahead. Go ahead. This match, I feel like, you know... If one of them decides to go for three NPC invaders just a little bit earlier, this match is totally different. That three NPC invaders, I think, I think made all the difference. I I still am trying to understand why exactly so many early game squares were left, like in the mid to late game. Duelists, uh, you know, Smithic Stone Bell Bearings, Dragon Heart Bosses. There was a, I don't know, it was weird. It was really, really odd to see some of those squares being just out there drying in the. Hot yeah, it air. was very strange. It's like we had, especially, I mean, the hot, the air was especially hot. That is a very good point. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we had some very attainable early game squares that were just, were just left on the board. While they, they, you know, went for things like uh, Grail without status effects. It's a bizarre match for sure. And it looks One like of the that more uh, ones we've seen. we are going to be uh, closing it early. Uh, Bree saying that if it isn't close at all and there's no way that she can uh, come back anyways, that we should just be calling it. So we're going to go ahead and call the match. That is going to be the match for Kata. Nicely done, Kata. GG's all around. I mean, up to the very end, this, yeah. this was a very close match. They uh they played extremely well on on both ends. Well played. And there we go. That was a that was a nuts match, man. If if uh yeah, Bree made that Fias or Moke call, I think that would have been an extremely interesting play for sure. But overall, it's still a fantastic match from both players. Yeah, I I do think if we. I, this was this was a crazy one because I think if Bree had gone for Moog immediately after Lanciax, she actually had a pretty good chance to tie. Yep. But there's just no way she could have known. 
That's the hard thing about late game. You know, late game, it seems easy when you have, like, only a few squares left, but it's the guessing game that really gets you going, where it's like, okay, what is the best choice that I can make here? What is the one that they're not going for? Which one are they going for? It can get really hectic and really stressful, for sure. Uh, let's yeah, bring that's, in... that's Bingus, baby. Yeah, it is Bingus. Let's bring in uh, Catalyst here first. Uh, welcome in, Cata. GG's, good sir. GG's. Great match. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. That was a fantastic game from from both of you guys. Uh, some interesting square choices. What was your like thought process for the early game here? Well, I, I thought it was pretty obvious that we would both go for the Margit with four parries. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I ended up getting that square, which is really good. Obviously, center square, so that's huge. Then I had some memes on uh, on Godric. Yeah, we saw and, he like stubbed um, his toe on you, and you got you got damaged by it. That was pretty it's ridiculous. The toe again. The that toe. was it was Dom's toe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I don't know what happened there. I'll have to watch the watch the video, watch the vod. But um, she got it, and then basically I was thinking whether she's gonna go for the great rune immediately or not, and so I was waiting for a little bit. I think I went to check round table first and stuff. Mm. And uh, she didn't have it, so I thought she's holding priority maybe. And um, which is kind of weird, right? That would be a weird play since I got Margit. Um, but yeah, yeah I just we were talking about that. The... Yeah, I decided to go for the great rune because I just, it was kind of a risky play, but I thought it, it's taken like way too long for her to claim that square. So maybe it's just not happening. And then as I was running to the elevator, I was like, maybe she went to Liurnia first and then went to like restore the rune and then I'm fucked. But. It worked out. And then after that, the center square opened me like a lot of opportunities. I tried to do some early blocks and then I was gonna go for that diagonal, which she really, really well uh, blocked with the Altus bosses. And then it was just a little bit of a scramble, I think for the majority at the end. We were really surprised to see both of you hold off on the three NPC invaders for as long as you did. We expected to see it right after the Godric's Great Rune, honestly. Yep. Mm, so, so you, yeah, yeah, that probably was the better choice. Now that I look at it, um, I did kind of like column four in a way, right? Like forcing to block with uh, either BBK or Mog would be really nice. So I wanted to get that. Um, I wanted to get that needle. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, it just seemed very odd. Yeah, it was on the board for a very long time. Duelist was on the board for a very long time. Smithic Stone Bell Bearings 1 and 2 was on the board for a really long time. So, just yeah, it was very weird to see that uh, you two were kind of dancing around these earlier squares by by going for uh, what seemed to be a little bit more difficult mid-game squares uh, in the early game. Um, but, yeah, yeah I think... Oh, go ahead. I would assume... Just one more, one more comment. I would assume that we both realize that having Altus is going to be very, very important. So, I think maybe that's mm. why... The early game squares were kind of left, um, and we started going for the Altus access for the diagonal, right? Like, I wanted to get it, and I think Bree wanted to block it, so we both worked towards it, and I think that's why the early game squares stayed for as long as they did. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, let me bring in uh, Blueberry as well here, uh, just a second. Uh, GG's Bree, welcome in, welcome in. Thanks, GG Kata. GG Bree, that was awesome. Yeah, very close match. Very fun. That was a yeah, that was a very close match overall. Uh, we were talking about early game here, Bree. What what was your thought process when it came to uh, the early game? Um, early game, I didn't really have a line or anything picked out that I was going for, but mm. I wanted to synergize Hitless with Margit and Godric's Great Rune. Yeah. Um, and then I think Kata got the Margit kill like five five ish seconds before me. And then I figured that he would hold on to that a little bit, maybe. Um, I didn't know if he was going to gun for that, but I, I didn't know if he was going to immediately go hitless or not. So I figured I'd just rush because he didn't know where I was because I didn't get that square. Right. So I was hoping that I could just sneak the hitless from him for that reason. Um, the great rune, it's always, that's always a hard one for me to know how long to hold on to that square, to be entirely honest. I, it's, it's tough. Yeah. Um, but obviously I held on to it a little too too long. But when, the more I looked at this board, the more I was like, okay, I really need to prioritize Altus access. 
Mm -hmm. So I tried to get the the small synergies that I could see with like the tunnels, precipice that gave me a nice setup for my weapon, and then also dragon heart bosses, um, with the magma worm and falling star beast. And then I, I, as you could see, I was considering doing Grail, without status effects because I had never tried the black knife yeah. weapon. Yeah. Yep. With... Yep. So I I wanted to try that out, and I was hoping that it would be similar to the peeler, but unfortunately, it wasn't um, as impressive. So I think that's like my biggest regret that I had in early game is that he scared me so much with the diagonal um that i i spent you know just wasted time on that but i think the pivot to altus bosses was the right call at that point um there's just a lot of reasons to be in altus for this board <laughs> a million reasons yeah yeah um, it seems like the grail was a bit of a time sink but you played extremely cleanly like you know outside of that like it's crazy because on both ends it seemed like this match was a really low death count all around which was very cool to see really thanks. let the the strategy shine through Thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, it sounds like a couple of squares were pretty close. My my chat was filling me in just recently about like Land CX being pretty close and uh, Margaret obviously was close. So we I think we had a very similar thought process. You just had better setup for um, Rikert at the end. I honestly, Kata, you really surprised me with Rikert's Great Rune. I, I had no Sorry. idea that you even, even had progress towards him. Yeah, I, I killed Rikard a long time ago. That yeah. Was, I killed Noble, and then I basically... Mm -hmm. I did something else after, and then I went for Rikard, and I held that great rune for a long time. Yeah. Because I, I was thinking that if you had it, right, if you did the similar strat that I wanted to do, I wanted to kill Rikard, obviously duo Noble, that's three Altus bosses already. Yep. Yep, and exactly. then I wanted to finish with Onyx Lord as the last one and restore the great yeah. rune. And <laughs> yeah. because you didn't restore it then, I was like, okay, she <laughs> probably hasn't killed Rikard. And yeah. then when you got the Smithing Stone Bell Bearings and still there was nothing happening, I was like, okay, she hasn't killed yeah. Rikard yet. Yeah, that was giving you, I think, good information about what I didn't have. And then I was kind of in the dark for, you know, the progress that you had. So that allowed you to, like, have more confidence, I think, pushing into capital with that knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was very well played, GG's. Yeah, yeah you too, that was insane. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, yeah, very close match. Uh, with that being said, we do have to move on to the second match, uh, but I really appreciate both of you. That was a fantastic match to watch. Uh, very interesting choices. I think we learned a little bit more about both of you uh, individual as players, I think as well, uh, your play styles and, and your thought process. Uh, processes, I should say. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much again. Uh, really appreciate it. GG's again to both of you. And best of luck uh, next week uh, in, in your uh, fifth week match. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Bye-bye. Yeah.